guys, we're back with another episode of MWBB Game here tonight. Without the pyro, no, without the pyro. So without the pyro, because we have something happen with the pyro here tonight. So we have to start the show and the opener match that was announced actually from uh, not announced, but it was actually rumored, and this happened during the backstage after last week's episode of MWBB. So what happened, yeah, we got to put Pyro for him, but like, okay, look, so what happened was, uh, Mr. Jenkins and, uh, Mr. Jenkins and Edge had a confrontation last week in the MW locker room, and something happened, and they said Edge can't go, he hasn't, Edge has not been wrestling since episode one, he lost to, uh, Joel Miller in the uh, match, the book is going to the MW championship, and Edge is a part-time contract, he's like the only part-timer that's in his 40s that he can just like relax and like not always appear but tonight that's gonna be different episode 8 seems the return of edge in action but in a tag team action but the partner for edge has been unknown but we know the partner i mean i know the partner you don't know yet as the partner has not been announced but it's austin theory as it was picked from mr jenkins himself well, not the actual Mr. Jacob, but in the game. You know. Pounds. What are you talking about? Terry. So, Austin Theory has... It's not Austin Terry, it's Austin Theory. So, yeah, Austin Theory has a lifetime moment here tonight in MWE to really prove that he can, like, show what the world can... What, show what he can do. Showing his uh, strengths and stuff. As he will be his first real match in MWE. He was in the Royal Rumble a couple weeks ago in MWE. But he's not really done much since then. Tonight, moment making night for Austin Theory. Can he prove? Or can the fans, can people in check get behind him? You know, can like he get noticed by the fans? But well, I don't know, but you know. The one, the only rated R superstar, the man who got noticed by everyone when he, he, he like, the moment everything with Edge, and, like, when he began, it's for 1999, in WWE, 1998, Attitude Era. The rated R superstar, I'm not doing that, uh, com I'm not doing that commentary thing, the announcement thing, no, I can't do that right now. But Edge makes his triumph for return to MWE after seven weeks of out of action here on the roster. Where he has, I don't know if he's missed a beat or not. We don't know how Edge feels right now. But with the question remains to me, who is his tag team partner? There will be in action later on right now. But who is it going to be? That's like the number one question going everyone's on everyone's mind right now. Who is going to be the partner for Edge? No way. You're, you're kidding me, right? That he, he's... Oh my god, it's Hulk Hogan. No way. I, I've never seen this pairing. And, and I'm probably in real life, but the immortal one, Hulk Hogan, as he was in the Royal Rumble last couple weeks ago in episode 6. Well, he's going after the MWE Championship, but he failed to do so. And he was a surprise, he was one of the surprise entrants, now maybe signs a deal, I don't know if he has a contract to maybe have a couple matches, or he was still in the uh, city, or wherever they were for MWE tonight. I heard MWE is in the exact same arena every week, that's what I'm hearing for some reason, so probably Hulk was still in town. Uh, so, may I don't know what the hell, if he's, I, I have no clue if Meeks wanted to get a contract for him, but, uh, looks like, uh, uh, he, is he gonna wrestle, can he wrestle, is, 
what form is this? Like, what age is this? Like, 68, 67? Is this... And the uh, M-Way was in prime. I mean, it looks like he was in Hollywood or Hogan still, but, like... I'm shocked and confused. I've never ever seen or ever would think in any wrestling. I think Edge and uh, Hulk Hogan have wrestled with each other, have like tagged with each other back in the day, maybe a couple times. But well, this is a weird pairing, just like Austin Theory and Mr. Jenkins. I mean, Mr. Jenkins is going to be in the ring. He might be in the ring, like face to face with Hogan. Same with Austin Theory. That's the moment for them. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm shocked right now. Enter the headlock and you see. Oh no. Oh! Mr. Jenkins, the power with his arm. His whole the edge. Oh my, on his neck. Oh no, you don't want to do that to his neck. His neck is really still up there. Oh! Edge. Oh god. Shot to the back. Mr. Jenkins, both is like, I, I forgot to mention his new like metal like Iron Man attire, you can see he's running in the ring to protect himself, so it's probably going to be hard to beat him, I mean it's allowed, it's MWE, come on. Myth Gods, Wrestling Entertainment, it could be any, it could be anything. Oh god, Body Slam, this traditional Hogan Body Slam from onto the Giant one at WrestleMania thir 3, I almost said WrestleMania 30. But it was at WrestleMania 3, 1987, where he body slammed Andre the Giant. He, he the first man to beat Andre in that match. And a tornado DDT from Edge. And now you see Edge and Austin Theory. That's the first time ever I never thought we'd see. Austin Theory in MWE. Oh, belly to belly. No. Count him reverse from Austin Theory. Power of Austin Theory. I've never seen a superstar mold like this. And I'm gonna. Oh, Cyclops. Slam him. Back first. Edge. Uh oh. Hey, oh, dropping him on near his spine. And near. Oh, Hogan. Oh, tagging me into Mr. Jenkins. Oh my god. No way. Oh. I'm a headbutt. Hogan made a headbutt. Hogan made that headbutt really quick there. And Mr. Jenkins with a tag. Oh, shots to the face. Oh, God. Mr. Jenkins with the shots. Right in that face. That neck breaker. And trying to break home his neck. Oh, God. Stunner. The stunner from Jenkins. He's going to pin the immortal Hulk Hogan. Oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know if he's a fan of Hogan or not. We all know mixed reactions of Hogan. But Hogan made it back to wrestling. And oh, oh, Jenkins. Oh, he had that the power of the uh, finisher time. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Don't you dare tell me. From the soup lunch on the top rope on a spawn first. On the metal steel on the floor. Good mighty goodness. But Hogan, he is still fighting, and now uh, Mr. Jenkins is now relaxing in the barricade corner. And, oh, I guess Hogan's gonna uh, destroy him while he's relaxing, trying to get some breather, you know? Oh, shot again. And a uh, suplex. But that metal is protecting him. Uh, his armor is had to be to protect him a little bit at least. I have no clue. Stay down from Hogan. Sending Jenkins. Oh. Chop. Back and forth in this match. Oh my god. Back body drop. Good goodness. The power of Hogan. Really body slam. Is Hogan going to body slam? Mr. Jenkins. And Mr. Jenkins are getting out of there now. All sit theory to the rescue. Here in MWE. Belly to belly call. Austin Theory caught it, thought he could stop Hogan, but a tag now to the veteran edge. Now, I don't know if Hogan is going to be a one-off, or is this going to be a return? I have no clue, honestly. Don't ask me if he signed a deal. And don't say that he's now joined MWE to score a multi month or week contract. I don't know if it's a one-time thing. Remember that. I don't I, 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 I don't know what Mickey God has. In, I don't know what he has, you know? We'll find out. Maybe this might be a one-off. I don't know. 
wants to do take control of the action for Edge. Well, no, oh, he looked for a cutter or something like an RKO, and he could not connect with that. Well, that's a belly now from the radar superstar to Austin Theory, you know, cover. Kick out at zero, and Austin Theory is already like, he's so in the match, though. He's not even like taking down a lot. I know. Send an edge down on the mat. Uh oh. Theory. Oh my goodness, what a move. What a move from Theory. One, two. See, Ogun trying to save his, uh, trying to, uh, baby break up the pin, but, uh, Edge kicked it at two. Well, that was a crazy move from Austin, but that's why you should, like, that's why he's a new upcomer. But Edge and Hogan have in store. What's this? Double elbow from Edge and a spear from Hogan. Kind of weird that Hogan did the spear and instead of Edge, but. Whatever. Oh! Get to the eyes. Hogan with the cover. Taking it from Austin Theory. Hogan right with the eyes. Oh. Big boot to the eyes. God dang. Uh oh. Hogan sending Theory into the corner. Lightning and Tim Buckles and shots made. Oh. Theory with the reversal. Theory now with the momentum. Hogan on top. Turnbuckle. Well, oh. Knock, knocks him down, I guess. Outside the ring on the steel again. Hogan has some back surgery from that leg drop. Will he deliver that leg drop to either uh, Mr. Jacob or Austin Theory? We have no clue. I mean, he has back, he has so many back swords and back pains and everything from that leg drop, he said. And getting some into that is like from the 80s and 90s to 2000s and 2012, he officially retired. But then in universe mode, in my universe mode from my YouTube channel I did upload a couple months ago where Owen came out of retirement to face Drew McIntyre on SmackDown and teamed up with The Miz on SmackDown in general, like first episode of universe mode of M uh, a universe mode, yeah SmackDown universe mode, like in general and the big match, his final retirement match against John Cena which he lost that match honestly which is crazy, but Owen had a farewell thing, so like that which was a crazy thing happened. But that was in our universal timeline. This MW timeline is another different universe. So, we never fought John Cena. He had not had a match for a long, long time. So, this is going to be... I don't know if Hogan's really... I don't know if Hogan's still... Oh, no. I was about to say, I don't know if he ate the Pythons. Brother, I don't know if he has the he has violent vitamins. But he has, probably. Uh-oh. Hogan. The ref's count of seven. Hogan getting back inside the ring. But Hogan getting right back in the ring now. I mean, back outside the ring. And Austin did... Oh! Close on to theory. You better get back inside the ring, Hogan. There are multiple close on the ring. Moves to the point. Finally sent the opponent, Austin Theory, back inside the ring. Uh-oh, Hogan! Hogan! Body slam! And the famous Immortal leg drop! Over Mr. Jenkins! Uh, Hogan! Jenkins just let the match go? What? Did Jake... What? So Hogan wins for the team, but I didn't get that. I did not get that. Is Mr. Jenkins want a piece of Hulk Hogan for himself, or is he a fan? And I, I don't know. I have no clue. I don't know how the fans in the arena react to Hulk Hogan's presence and teaming up with a uh, fan favorite Edge, the return of Edge. So Edge. And Hogan teaming up, which is a weird pairing, but congrats on both men on winning the match. And I think Mr. Jenkins, I did not get a word of his role, why he didn't break up the pin and stuff. But yeah. So, yeah, that's it. For the last couple weeks, I haven't been here on MW, on the show.
The reason is because of what happened to Joel Miller, the first ever MWE champion. And I've been afraid to come to work knowing that there's a guy who could do that to me. You know, he could have done that to me, but he didn't. I fought King Blaze in two matches, both where I lost tag team match and a singles match. I've lost both of them. I, I proved that I could do it, but I, I took a break from that. But I need to bring back the momentum. Next week, I'm going to be back in MWE stronger than I ever was. I'm going to try to grind. No, I'm going to grind on this business. I'm going to become the top superstar, become the face of the MWE roster on top of everyone. And one day, King Blaze, we're going to have our rematch, and I will beat you. I'm trying to be chill tonight, you know, for the show. Unlike previous weeks, I'm kind of crazy and over my head. I think that we should be calm a little bit, and when there's big moves, like big crazy stuff, then I go wild. I'm just gonna say that right now. But the crossplay champion, Chad, making his way to the ring with some new gear, with a new, okay, that's the first. See the fist right there in this t-shirt, with his cap and sunglasses and his coat or like jacket. Okay. I feel Chad. I think he's trying to be a mega star that he is now, you know, 4 0 in MWE. And he's still the crossplay champion. He won the Elimination Chamber. He, he made the scene a couple episodes ago in MWE. You know, he beat Dana Bryan. He won the Elimination Chamber to become the first ever crossplay champion. He beat Joe Burns in the uh, finisher in. Uh, in a steel cage match, which I heard the rivalries, um, Mr. Burns wants some more of Chad in that steel cage or some crazy stuff, but Chad has defended, has to defend his title in an open challenge here tonight, and oh my goodness, Stewie Griffin is the challenger for the crossplay championship. We have not seen much of Stewie Griffin. He made his debut in episode 1 in the Battle Royal or Royal Rumble to go after the MWE Championship. Could it be the one to be suffered, golfed, clubbed in the head by the hands of Abby and the hacker? Or would it have been the same thing Joel Miller would have been always targeted? That's the one question in wrestling MWE history. Would it? Joel lost the match. What if he never beat Edge? What if Edge beat him? And what if Edge became the champion? What if Edge got killed? Some sort, which is a bad thing. But what if that happened to him? What if the hacker did that to him? You know, it could have been so different. Or what if the hacker didn't do nothing? You know? I have no clue. But the match is now, I guess... That match is going to go down in history, you know, episode 1 and 2. But tonight, Stewie Griffin has the opportunity to become the crossplay champion in MWE. And introducing the champion from the United States of America. Weighing in at 220 pounds, he is the Dango. So Chad has a new merchandise. You know, to keep the things fresh in MWE, the superstars getting new attires and new looks and stuff, you know. Chin up, changing up the gear and stuff, and their attitude if they're face or heel, but Stewie Griffin already knows what's about to go down. So does Chad. Will he come out victorious in this crossplay title match? We have no clue. Griffin is ready. Chad is ready. Are you ready? Let's go. And match. The bell has been rung, and Chad, oh, already Stewie Griffin on the attack from Chad right away. And Griffin gonna go right back up to the so A shot is made. And oh, Chad knocked down, right in the neck. Stewie Griffin gonna get him up. And drop it, oh gosh, oh goodness. He has a, oh, big boot, nope. Chad, uh oh. 
sending Griffin into the corner. What now? Stewie, oh no, shot to the face. Griffin, oh, what? Chad. Oh no, Chad, don't do this. From the outside, from the freaking top turn level on the seal floor. God damn it. God damn. What the fans are saying, this is awesome indeed. Just crazy and stuff. Stewie Griffin and Chad, oh. DDT on the steel. My goodness, oh, Chad's right back on. Stewie Griffin, the scientist. Oh no. Choke slam. Grabs counter five. Chad. Uh oh. Stewie Griffin getting right back up. Oh no. Oh, on the steel. Gosh. That's brutal. On the steel. Uh, oh no, not again. Chad's insane. God dang it. Stops the Sue Griffin. And wins by count out. Chad wins by count out in MWE to retain the Crossplay Championship. Alright. Watch your step as you're going out. Cause it's going to be a little. So basically we have a contract with Joe Miller since he died uh, we have to feature him some way somehow on the show so we're gonna feature him with best moments from the last of us one and part two and every week as we can at least one cutscene so to remind the fans that Joel was a legend and a great father figure and a great father himself as well so that's why you see Joel from episode 6 stabbing a guy in the knee. One probably the most badass scene I've ever seen from him in The Last of Us Part 1. Probably my favorite cutscene I've ever seen. But oh my goodness. Oh god, Jason. So yeah, we're gonna see that. Last week we saw uh, Joel and Ellie from the uh, giraffe. And you don't have to, we don't have to do this stuff like that and blah blah blah. And this week, the journey, uh, the, 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 the view, yeah, that, that's cool. Yeah, we're gonna see that every week, so if you are, uh, if you want to see more of Joel, you're gonna see Joel in that shape of form. Oh, no. Chokeslam from Jason, he's not in a good mood tonight. Jason lost last week the, uh, opportunity to become the champion. The, he lost the MW champ, he lost the MW champion. Cody Rhodes in a ladder match last week. And lost in the Royal Rumble after a lifetime performance of elimination. So many. I didn't even count because that's how much I lost track of how many opponents he eliminated. Maybe 18, 15, 16, I don't know, maybe less. But Jason's not a good dude with glitched face tonight. Jason's not in a good mood. Tombstone. And Jason Voorhees is victorious. Jason has speak the cheese. Not even spoke a word since he drowned. But he's shown to the MWE roster that he is dominant. 
from the last three episodes, from six, seven, and now eight, we've seen the destruction of Jason. This is a crazy, crazy, uh, man, but oh no, Jay, oh no, he's not done. No, Jay, don't do this on top of him, don't you dare, Jason. Jason ain't done there. Oh, Jason missed. Remember, guys, he is, or he was, a killer. So, he's calmly down, but he is still a ruthless dude to break bones. Probably Ghostface will never wrestle again. Oh, this dude. I feel sorry for Glitchface. Oh, no. Power slam. Rest, rest in peace, Glitchface. Ah. We have another match uh, for the contest, I guess. Cain Velasquez will be here. Teaming up with uh, CM Punk to go against John Cena and Cam Martin tonight. Cam Martin's second ever match in MWE after making a debut splash here last week in MWE. Making his presence known. And also the debut now, the debut match of John Cena. He made his debut, official debut in the Royal Rumble in episode 6, but John Cena, you know, he's about hustle, loyalty, and respect. The first time we see John Cena have a regular tag team match, a regular, like, match we see against superstars, you know what I mean. Tag team or singles match, John Cena is there to get a new upcomer, like Cam Martin, to show him around the ropes, even though Cam Martin is a veteran already himself, but he's new. I mean, they're all new superstars in MWE. Ken Velasquez, Chris Jericho, like CM Punk, John Cena, like Kim Blaze, everyone is new right now. Like everyone is new. Nobody's old in MW. Now until we get like a couple seasons in. You know, so So CM Punk is probably the fan favorite in all of wrestling. But is he the fan favorite in MWE? Because we get a lot of superstars in MWE that we have. That a lot of people do love, like Homer Simpson. We got freaking like Peter Griffin. We got Peter Pie. We got Ninja Tifu. We got John Cena. We got Cam Martin. Uh, we got Cam Blades. Jason Voorhees. We had. We still got Joe Miller. On the contract, you know, like the most beloved superstars and most beloved characters. But like, we're trying to build new stars like Chad. We're trying to build like the Finisher. Uh, we're trying to build like Mr. Jenkins. Austin Theory, and all and so on and so forth, the list goes on and so forth, even Deadpool is beloved by fans, uh, Batman's also beloved by fans, and Batman is under contract, yes, Nathan Drake, like, I'm, like, showing off who is in MWE, you know, so, like, we have a bunch of them in MWE, a bunch of talent, and we just got four new signings as well, four new signing contracts, Four new superstars will be entering. Yeah, and this is not from last week. I did say there was a couple more new superstars from last week, but now we got four more new ones. Well, you also from this and that from the list. Sheamus is a new upcomer, or not a new, he's a new superstar in MWB, but he's not part of the contracts that I said now of four new contracts. He's not one of those guys. Uh, Trevor Phillips is one of the guys. He's not actually one of the guys, but uh. He's one of those guys that actually can appear one more time. Because we're actually in the city of Los Santos. So we can, uh, you see what's there in GTA 5. But the man from West Newbury, Massachusetts. Went at 241 pounds. From West Newbury, Massachusetts. Weighing in at 220 pounds. 20 pounds, I guess. Cena. Cena. John Cena, not Caesar, or whatever they say. John Cena making his MWE entrance debut here tonight. On the roster, Cena has 16 championships. 16, that is the number. 16 world championships. Now, you may say John Cena has to become a 17-time champion for the WWE Championships, right? I said it's a world title. 
MWE World Championship. John Cena can win that title and become a 17 time champion. But will that be the case? Right now, John Cena's not focused on that. He's focused on teaming up with Cam Martin and his opponent is Kane Velasquez. And his old, probably one of his best matches back in 2011 at Money in the Bank. CM Punk. But how will Cam Martin know? I don't know if he's a fan of Cena or not. I mean, who? I mean, if you hate Cena that much still in 2020, I don't know what's wrong. Cam Martin trying to, you know, last week teamed up with the man, the King Blaze himself, who was actually supposed to be. We had a couple superstars that had to be on the show tonight, but uh, see, I can only literally I can only fit like an hour of content of wrestling, so uh, because like the video clips on PlayStation, I record on PlayStation, so yeah, I don't I don't record on PC, so if I had that, I could record longer. If that would be so much better, if I can't do this. So Story mode, but that was cut out for next week. Probably, I don't know. We had some super schedule to finish the burns a little bit schedule, but we have to we have to cut that out too. Uh, I was about to cut out some matches too, but uh, I was actually gonna probably uh, really, really gonna I'm not gonna say right now, but cut out Chad's match because maybe you could say that for next week. But the new look, the new attire is what they need, is what they need to show, you know. So. And this match was also, like, we had a lot of matches. I had to rewrite the script, okay? I don't even have a script. It's all in my head. There is no lines. I don't script my lines. All my lines come out of my head right now. They just come out. So, yeah. John Cena, okay. Has he? Had, oh, Cain Velasquez going for the cover. Already Cena and a kick out from Cain Velasquez. Right instantly, the former UFC star, the man who beat Brock Lesnar in 2010. To become the UFC champion. Well, Cena's never beat Brock Lesnar. That is, I mean, he's beat Brock Lesnar one time. Well, Brock has been like four to 17 times. So, John Cena, oh, and a close line missed from the athlete, Ken Velasquez. Oh, the UFC shots the knees and the stomach. And the shot is made. The point is viewed. A close line from Ken Velasquez to Cena. Kane has him up. Cena. The power of Velasquez. And Cena right back up. And Velasquez belly to belly to the 16 time world champion. It looks like Cam won the tag, but it doesn't look like Cena's gonna make that tag right now. Velasquez out. Oh, Cena with a counter. Oh, oh my goodness. The rival CM Punk makes his way. Belly to belly suplex. Oh, not belt to this, it's a German suplex, what am I talking about? And Cena sending the Punk of personality in the corner. A shot is made in a Punk. Oh, Cena Punk with a reverse. Now Martin, Cam has made his way. With a knee to the back. Oh my goodness, Cam wanted Punk. Now he's going to get him. I mean, he wanted Chris Danger. I mean, Chris Danger is signed to MWE Cam. You're gonna get the match one day. I can't say when, I can only tell you when. But uh, I can't, like, I don't, I'm not gonna spoil it. But one day, don't worry, Cam, don't worry. One day. But not in this episode, though. Enjoying that match, you know. And plus, Chris Danger has not been seen, I believe, since episode one. Where he was number 30 in the battle room. He's a celebrity, he's a, he's a YouTuber, okay? So he can't. The YouTubers can't be shown that much. Like the big YouTubers that have jobs, and you know, some YouTubers have jobs. Some of the small YouTubers, like Chad and like and like Swisher and Jim, they they have jobs too. So like, but they have time to show up and they'll be doing whatever they can. So yeah. Just, well, I said think they got jobs. I I don't know. Okay, I don't know nothing. I'm just assuming. But their real jobs are in WWE. You know? Oh God, can't the last case. They can. Oh my goodness. Slamming down Cam, 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 with a show, oh my goodness, super kick, running super kick to the, 
You were, you were formerly, uh, I don't even know, formerly of CSI, I don't even know this guy. Okay, I'm tell, okay, I'm tell, uh, Blaze, how's the, uh, how's the dream match in the UFC happen? King Blaze versus King Velasquez, has that happened yet? I don't know. I'm wondering. Oh, Cam, oh my god, close on. Kick up from Cam, though. And a shot to the ear. Down goes Velasquez. John Cena watching. And Cam with a cover. Damn it. Cam only had a wake out there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Samoan driver. You're, you're, you're kidding me right now, right? Oh, yeah. oh, are you kidding me? So, Kane Velasquez and CM Punk win like that? Bruh. Sorry, Cam, but, uh, that's, the uh, that's what happened. Bruh. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, this show, I swear this, uh, this promotion, Meep God's Wrestling Entertainment is missing something. See, the M is for Meep, the W is for Wrestling, and the E is for Entertainment. You take that one letter, take the M, but it's not Meep, it's Montel, right? You take Montel, you put a V. What does the V stand for? Montavious. So Montel, Montavious, and then you put a P. What does the P stand for? Porter. Montel, Montavious, Porter. I'm coming to M W E, and I will be making my debut soon. I'm making my contracts. I am one of the four superstars that Meek God was talking about. I am one of the superstars that we have a contract. For how long though? And when will it start? One day. And if you never, if you don't know about me of M uh, MVP, go watch on YouTube of what I am or on the WWE Network back in 2006 through 2010, and. Through 2020 as well, Monday Night Raw, because I managed the almighty Bobby Lashley, but MWE, that might change, but we'll see, because now MWE will be the most must-see show. For 20 pounds, Drake so, uh, I guess MVP is making his way to MWE very, very soon, but our main event tag team match is now scheduled. So, as the title says, or I don't know what the title is actually going to be, but the Tag Team Championships are now going to be up for grabs for the first time ever. Last couple weeks ago, five or six weeks ago, I don't know what you want to say, Episode 2, we crowned our first ever MWE Champion. Joel Miller was the first ever MWE World Champion. In episode 6, we crowned our second ever champion, our first ever make card champion, the first ever crossplay champion, Chad, and then tonight will be two men will be champion. If you're wondering, Drake Bell and Josh Peck, Drake and Josh, if you're not familiar with Nickelodeon, Drake and Josh, this is them. Drake and Josh from Nickelodeon back in 2004 and 2007. Probably, no, my favorite Nickelodeon TV show live action still today. It's funny, it's hilarious, it's literally the best show I've ever seen. Literally. So, go watch it if you have not already. Go watch on Hulu then. It's on Hulu. But, they have an opportunity to become 
MWB Tag Team Champions here tonight, but they gotta get past two men, the real best friends. You may not think they'd be a tag team, but they are. Jack Hayes with the motorcycle and MWB. With that, okay, that's the Undertaker's motorcycle, I believe, in black and white uh, stuff, I guess, uh, Eight, 80s or 70s, 60s, I don't know, 40s, the 1940s, now we're going back in time, but Jack Hayes is now going up for the Tag Team Championships, but who, who's the sack to part of? That's a question I already know, but I'm going to leave it for a surprise shot. For you guys to uh, see later on, who will be the partner for Jack Hayes? We'll find out. Best friend, Jack Hayes here tonight. Antonio, Texas, in at we'll find out. Pounds. The Iron Bull yeah. makes his way to the ring with the hammer. You don't wrestle with the hammer though. <clears throat> he wrestles with his fists, but he wrestles with the armor. And he wrestles with that helmet. As creepy as it looks, it's the truth. It comes from a family that they do warriors back in the days. The fights he's been through. Now to be a real fighter in MWE. To potentially become a champion with his best friend. We'll find out. Like they don't know each other really. Like they know each other. But they have not talked to each other like face to face in a long, long time since the Iron Bull moved out of his home. You know, they were, you know, they were in the same place, dude. They were against each other in their time in the war. And they're fighting with bows and arrows. But they knew that, you know, like one of them was good. So they took him. So J Jack is now like. A real life person. Well, the Iron Bull does not talk really as much. After we don't know what much about him, but his past is really unknown, really. Except what I've already told you now. And the first time they ever spoken or even speak in MWE is happening in the for the Tag Team Championships. And the Iron Bull already on the target of Josh and Noah. And you can see that JK's. Or Jack Hayes. It's, oh! Iron Bull with an uppercut to Judd Drake Bell. And he ends up and see Josh is. Oh, with Judd Jack Hayes going right after Josh now. That is insane. We'll find out though. Josh. J Jake is on the top rope now. Uh, Jack is on. What? Jack and Jack. Whatever the name is. Oh my god. From the top rope. Turnbuckle. And they're coming from the, uh, the Iron Bull on Drake Bell. And the color was made to do. Drake Bell is not going to let down for his one of the two tag team championships. Once in a lifetime. First ever tag team champs. He's going to go down. 
you know, Driven Josh have not really been seen in MW since episode three. The day when they made their uh, tag team debut with a lot of superstars, and also when the debut of Jordan Fisher Burns happened, and the debut of like Keith Velasquez and like Mr. Jenkins, a lot of debuts in that episode. Like they made their first initial like King Velasquez and the uh I mean it was like Josh and Drake made a debut in the first episode and then we made the world rumble but we never got a show that they can really do together. So here today, oh cover from Jack and Drake kicks out of too. Drake is still live in the back oh Josh. But the pedagogy to the iron ball. Will that finish off the Iron Bull? And you can see by Jack Hayes, he wants to go right after Josh immediately. AC Drake. Oh! With a zigzag, you can see the Iron Bull with the arm of Drake. And oh! Josh already taking down Jake Hayes. J Jake is going outside now. And Jack, with Jack Hayes! Jack back in the ring. Oh, clothesline. Drake Bell with the Iron Bull or the power. Jack. Oh, wait. Drake. What bull? Suplex from the top turnbuckle. And you can now see Josh. Josh, what's gonna go for? Uh, power bomb. But Josh not done there. Josh with the power. Oh, the knee to the gut. And you see Drake. Uh, step right hands, but, but the arm bolt not going to go down, though. It's not going to phase him at all. In this Torino tag team match, not at all. Arm bolt just sat up. The arm bolt is wearing his uh, metal gear. Oh my god, knocked him down. God damn, he was, we just got, he just got like looked out, knocked out. Jake going for, uh, Jack going for the cover. Josh. The power of Josh. Power slam, but uh oh, the claw. Oh no, trying to squeeze Jake's head. Oh, Drake's head. His uh, brain, or whatever you want to call that. Oh, I think Drake's knocked out. The arm bull has the advantage of Josh trying to go on, uh, he's going on the mountain of uh, terror. Trying to go off with the iron bolt here, but he can't do that right now. And he's trying to make his way. Oh god. The iron bolt made his debut in episode one. Oh! Tackle from Josh. Oh, the mask though, but will that even do anything? That might even hurt Josh's fingers himself. Yeah. Uh oh, drop kick. Oh god. Josh drop kicked. Jake or Jack. And oh! Missed. The Iron Bull is hurt. So is Jake, uh, Jack Hayes. I keep getting the names mixed up. Oh, Drake. Slams him down. Josh, going quick on his feet. This is when they're an adult, I guess. Not their uh, TV show. Uh oh. Josh. Uh oh. Josh. Uh -oh. Suplex from Josh. Got another one. Connecting. Uh oh. Jack. Samoan driver. Oh, but Drake was in the rope, so Drake gets right back up. He has the arm bow right where he wants him. And Jack breaks it up though. And see Josh. Oh, this is dying already. Oh no. Josh. Swan. And the final calling. Kick out from the arm bow. No way. Iron Bull kicked out a one. Drake, Drake, do they want their mini chips? Drake and Josh are the new tag team champions in MWE. For real? Wait, is this real? New tag champs. First time ever tag team champions in MWE. Drake and Josh look to have done it. The two brothers, Drake Bell and Josh Peck. 
did it here tonight and look at the booze. Why are you booing them? Congrats to Drake and Josh on becoming the first ever tag team champions in MWE. They deserved it and a good show. I'll say that a good TV show they got on Nickelodeon. What they used to have. Sega returns after the nightmare match, but the one thing I notice is two things actually. One, his hair. Why is it longer? The hair color. He looks noticeably a little bit younger than four, uh, 67 years old, I'll say that. Well, I mean, he didn't look like this last week with his coat and jacket. Standing here tonight, but we have not. I, I, I don't know. We'll find out what the Integrator has to say tonight. Yup, that hair is not. That hair is not white. He had white, noticeable hair last time. That is like gray hair right now. What? Give me an explanation right now. <clears throat> You may be asking yourself how and why. How do I look younger than 67? See, the nightmare match happened noticeably made time for me after I lost. My body was broken. But the time after he made the match over, the nightmare I woke up, and the time travel happened seven years in the past. Now you see me, sixty years old. However, Jacoby, this ain't over. Jahacker, you're blue. I'm gonna fight you again in my match in my stipulation. Jacoby, I want one more match with your sorry ass in a boneyard match. He didn't call me to come out here and do this, but I want to do this anyway. I want to fight you, dead man, in a wrestling. 
wrestling match tonight. We got six minutes left. And I think I can take you on because you're 60 years old and you're not even going to like, you're, you're probably going to break your neck in that ring. And I want to, I want to be your final opponent and I want to win. I mean, if you're up to the task of having this match, dead man, huh. I don't think you are because you're afraid. You're afraid of what I would do to you. You're I'm sorry, but did you say that I'm afraid? Listen, son, I'm not afraid of nothing. I'm not afraid of the hacker. I'm not afraid of nobody, of nothing. I'm the demon of Death Valley. They should be afraid of me. You wanna break my neck? You wanna end my career? Fine. I accept. So did the Antigua just accept the death wish of a match against, I guess, uh, Tyler Breeze or whatever this guy is? Oh no, Antigua. Oh, with this hat still on. Go on against Tyler, uh, uh, Mr. Fashion Show, I guess you can call him. The shots in the knee. The dead man, I guess at six years old, has something left to prove. The last ride from the Undertaker. Throat slashing. It up. Tyler Breeze up. He's up. Super kick. Oh my goodness. Undertaker kicked out with his hat still on. Did that mean to get right back up? And oh, a shot. No. No. No way. Oh my god. Oh my. That's it. Kicked out. I thought that was going to be it. Oh my god. Demi kicked out. At the very last second. I'm taking. Oh, a shot. Uh oh. Choke slam from hell. From the skies above. Down to hell. The power of the Undertaker. Down. Not again. Last ride. The Phenom is returned. Looking way better than he did at 67. Tombstone pile driver. One, two, three. The dead man has returned to MW. He didn't even have to take his hat off. That's how good it was. But the message has been sent to Jacoby. Will he accept the boneyard match in MW? next week and will they have the match next week or will they save it for the 10th episode of MWE the 10th anniversary thank you all for watching this episode uh, leave a like if you did and subscribe if you're new to the channel like if you see and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video whenever I do a video or stream or whatever so uh, yeah